Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, European crossover webinar. Uh, we've seen the the uh, euro going pull back, uh, obviously, because uh, we had Draghi uh, come on with some comments, and that really uh, kicked the stuffing out of the euro. And so we'll go on and touch on that, because obviously that kind of sets a theme to what happened. We saw a nice uh, rally in the euro. I was expecting that yesterday. Um, had also, you know, like I said, we're starting to actively trade gold, which I think is actually an excellent uh, trading market. It's kind of a little bit quiet on the prior or preceding days, but I think it's going to be a great market to go on and trade uh, from a day trading uh, standpoint. We'll get into that. I mean, I think it's important that we go on and, and look over what's moved the year overnight because we've had some pretty big moves uh, overall. And uh, we'd seen that nice rally. Uh, eventually, I was looking for a move to a 756, and we did get that, or just a, a bit above it. We'll go into all that, but we're going to cover what's happened on the news overall. So, uh, Euro ECB is Draghi sinks Euro after two days of gains, um, and it's a Reuters story. Comments from the ECB chief Mario Draghi sent the Euro down half a percent. Below 107 on Friday after two days, days of gains, which dealers now put to a closing of trading positions by a handful of major investors. If you remember, I mean, I mentioned it here. I did definitely on Insight Call. I said when we were down in the in the lower 106, I said I think what you're seeing is quietly you're seeing a lot of liquidation. Now, of course, after all the fact, and everybody starts saying that, but it says. Um, uh, Let's see, most major banks stuck firmly to see uh, the view that the dollar will rise towards parity with the single currency months ahead as the Fed begins to raise its interest rates uh, while other central banks do the reverse. Obviously, we're referred to as, uh, you know, like I said, a, a divergence of monetary policy. However, a robust batch of U.S. jobs data at the start of November has stymied moves in that direction. Um, the greenback fall last week against the basket of currencies used to measure its broader strength and is up just three tenths. Draghi said the ECB would do just that to raise inflation as fast as possible, pointed by the benefits of a cut in deposit rates to aid in expansion of quantitative easing program of buying. We have some more dovish comments from Draghi, and that has driven uh, the euro just uh, down just now, Rob, uh, Rabobank strategist Piotr Mati says. It, it does seem the ECB is heading down to the road, of, uh, uh, and the market is positioning for it. He also says, it does seem that the big euro bounce of two days ago was one of the big institutions liquidating positions. A senior dealer did said it at, uh, at an international bank. Well, no crap, or you saying it in more nicer words. Well, no crap, Sherlock. I mean, I was saying that when we were down there, when we were sitting there and the euro couldn't get up any higher. I said, you know, I think what you're seeing is quietly, you're seeing a lot of you know, evening up because we had talked about when we looked at the longer term charts of how most of these big banks with the big hands had got short after the FOMC minutes, uh, probably around 950, 940-ish because the market had fallen so far at that time. And that's why when we made that run to 1070, I really wasn't worried. It surprised me, as I said yesterday, that we got above 110. But uh, nonetheless, like I said, uh, we were obviously going to be heading lower. And when we got down to lower sixes, like around six, remember I was sitting there 630, 640, I said, so these banks have 300 pips in their pocket. At the very least, they're going to take at least one third off if they think we're going straight to parity, and some are going to probably take off more than that. So we'll go into the next story for a little bit of details. Um, and here's the notes on, on the actual, you know, his... Uh, discussion. EC Bank uh, is re ready to act quickly to boost anemic inflation in the Eurozone. Its president said on Friday, highlighting changes to the asset purchase program and deposit rate uh, as possible tools. Draghi's comments offered the strongest hint yet the ECB will unveil fresh stimulus measures at its December 3rd meeting to stop inflation from falling further below its target of just under 2%. He said, if we decided the current tra trajectory of our policy is not sufficient to achieve our objective, We'll do what we must to raise inflation as quickly as possible, Draghi told a conference in Frankfurt. His audience included the most prominent critic of the ECB ultra-easy policy on the bank's governing council, the Bundesbank's uh, president, Jens Weidmann, uh, Germany's finance minister, Wolfgang Scharvel, uh, who had also had openly criticized the ECB in several occasions, was also due to speak at the event. 
This ECB had bought 60 million euros, uh, mostly government bonds, uh, since March to help revive inflation. But prices rose just one tenth of a percent in October. Draghi defended the ECB's QE program, saying it bought down borrowing costs for eurozone companies. He also said the scheme could be expanded and extended, and its composition changed to provide further stimulus. He said the ECB would also change the level of its deposit rate to boost the impact of QE. I already told you that I'm looking for this to go. I know uh, Capital Economics is looking for that. A lot more banks are looking for that to go to to. Uh, you know, 0 0.30 now. The ECB's uh, deposit is currently minus 0.2. Many banks are charged to park cash at the ECB, giving them an added incentive to lend rather than pile reserves at the central bank. Uh, markets are expecting further ECB action on December 3rd, most likely including a further cut to the deposit rate and expansion of the asset purses beyond their schedule, which I had already talked about, and, you know, extending the duration. And Draghi said the ECB will act if it, it concludes uh, will act if it concludes that the eurozone inflation was a risk of falling further away from the ECB's target, echoing concerns already expressed in the October meeting at the Bank's Governing Council. If we conclude the balance of risk to our medium-term price stability objective is skewed to the downside, we will act by using all instruments available on a mandate. So that's the key news, and like I said, you know, sometimes we spend a little bit more time, sometimes we look as to what is coming across the docket, which we do right now. We've seen, we had some German PPI coming into the U.S. session. We've got some Canadian uh, CPI. There is no F, uh, any U.S. data to speak of. We do have U, uh, United States ECRI, but... Uh, and then we also have Fed manufacturing, but it's Kansas City Fed manufacturing, so it's it's definitely a lower tier. So there isn't any what I would call there's no tier one data, and I wouldn't consider the KC Fed manufacturing even tier two data. So basically, we're coming into the U.S. session, you know, as far as economic data, nothing to really speak of, and even in the overnight, it was just German PPI, but we saw a pretty good fallback in the euro uh, on the backdrop of Draghi's comments and so we're going to move into the comments or actually to the charts I mean so let's go on and jump into that Dan says, I know you don't trade Aussie dollar, but we'd love your thoughts, please. Uh, 7241 is a 61% from the move down from 1012 to 1110. Looking at short. Um, I might have an Aussie chart. I don't even know. Yeah, I do. Let's start up there real quick. I, do, I mean, I, we can follow these. I just don't chart them anymore. So we'll just throw a real quick one away. So let's do a quick fib on this. Well, you know, Blake got Blake got bullish on this on on the backdrop of what we were talking about in in gold, and also copper it coming into some support. So, Blake's been looking to play this thing for the long side. I don't know if he got long again. And so we got the 61 percent of this move is coming in at 72.41. So you're absolutely correct there, and that's of this move here, 70.16 to. Uh, 73.82. Then, if we look at it on a 72.60, is pretty key right here too. And we're going to move this out to get a better look. So, and we'll even push this out even further. So you can see how key 72.60 is. 72.60 finally cupped the market, and for that we got a rally. Up to about 74 and a quarter. Actually, this rally started about 74.20. We fell back, and we got below 72.60. We reclaimed it, and before we fell, we got up to about 74 and a quarter. We fell below there, and then within the same bar, and we'll look at this. Within the same bar, we were able to reclaim 7260 and get above it. Come back to retest 7260, and then we launched ourselves to about 7475. Came back in here, retested to again to about 74 and a quarter before we fell back pretty good again. Reclaimed the 7260, went back up here towards 74. So my point is, you can see the significance of 7260. So. 72.41 is going to be the 61 percent 
Now, one thing about Aussie, once it gets going, it just gets going in one direction. Now, the reason I don't trade it anymore is because, like I said, I primarily day trade and scalp, and I can't, I can't deal with this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's just sitting here like a fucking bump on a log. Now, one thing about Aussie, once it gets trending, it will trend like a mother. And so you can see this from back here. You need to go way much further back. But you can see how this thing really, once it gets going in one direction, it's hard to stop this monster. I mean, it just goes. I mean, here we are in the 8150s, which was a hell of a, uh, of a, uh, a short. You can see this awesome shooting star right here after that run. And then, of course, we already know the rest is history because look how much we just kept falling. So once Aussie starts trending in one direction, it's pretty tough. Now, the only thing is that iron ore has been still continuing to weigh on the market, but we're into some very key supporting copper, also gold. We're starting to see, like, as I said, the last week and a half, I thought, and I was surprised we got down into the 62. But I said, you know, you're going to see some demand under the market because if we come into the Christmas holiday season, you're going to see some, some jewelry demand which is going to be able to hold it from taking a massive leg down, although I was surprised that we made it into 1160s. So you're starting to see this, I believe it's probably just really short covering on the Aussie dollar. So the target is going to be the 7260. So you do have 7241, as you noted, the 61%. But my guess is we'll take it and we'll get we'll breach 7260 at least for just a little bit. So if you wanted to be on the safe side, I would say... You can look at 7260, but they might squeeze it up to about 7274 right in here. You see these touches right here, here, here. That takes you to 7274 right there, 7275. So let's get going on the on the euro. Get rid of this thing. I knew that was good. I have to find that chart now. Okay, well anyway, let's just jump onto the euro now. So we saw that rally yesterday that I was looking for. And like I said, when we got down here, I was saying, you know, this is all about, you know, I think that you were seeing some some good uh, liquid, you know, cover, um, evening up of positions by some big hands. That's what I thought down here when the market was trading so quiet because those guys had got short from, as we've described already before, they got short here. This is that big old fall post FOMC minutes. And then we worked back up. This is on a Wednesday. So we started working back up on Thursday. And then when we came in on Friday, I was surprised to see the market get above 10. Not not to get just barely above it, but to start to hold its own above 10. When it was holding 10, 10, 10, 12. And then we just start moving and moving higher, and we just start squeezing the hell out of people. But I knew that there was this area was all big hands that got short on the break of the FOMC minutes at the time, minutes release. So these guys weren't going to go in and let, let off that that pedal and so they hung in there and that was my whole idea when I came in that Monday morning I said whether you sold it here here or you sold it at the bottom you were going to get your money back no matter what in the euro so what we've done is we came down here and the market was really overdone you know obviously I think we're going lower I don't think we're going to parity outright immediately and when I say that immediately I mean for for some reason I've just got 102 and a quarter is my area that where the market is going to, you know, find a bottom and then we'll find a decent bounce. Eventually we'll probably go sub parity, but that's that's going to be not on the next move. I don't believe. So I think that the market was poised to eventually move a little bit higher, and I was even hoping for a um, you know a rally, a stronger rally to take us up to the 70 789 area. That I mentioned and I discussed with Blake, but like I said, a funny thing happened on the way to the to the um, uh, trying to think of the name that they called it. Anyway, the eh, can't even think of the name of it. But anyway, the but funny thing happened on the way to the pavilion. It's not the pavilion, but whatever. But um, so and I did see this when we got to 756. I saw this close. And I go, you know, it's gonna you know lean some more on it if we see this close, you know, with this bar. But, um, you know, initially on the first run, I thought we'd run out of gas at 743, drop back into the 30s, make a move at 756, then, 
ease back again, and then eventually, you know, mark, mark higher. And in the, as I mentioned to some people, because I'm not conversing too much on Twitter, uh, is that when we got up here, because I got, I had already got long the gold, and I and I thought the gold looked like it might fall apart. So I jumped out of my euro long, which I thought was a pretty good position when I came in. But when I look at it, I guess it really wasn't. And that's why I came in at 683, and we'll talk about that. But it's not that much of an interest at this point to talk about that trade. But I, I jumped out on the way up. And then we finally got that leg up in gold. And so while the euro was sitting in the 17s, uh, that's when I was telling people in the chat room, hey, look, I think gold's going to make another run up here. And I said, you know, make a run towards 85. We actually got to 86.20, and I had a level there. So I think it's going to take off. Uh, if, if Euro can hold its own above 709, I think it's going to take off. Now, I wasn't getting long Euro at that time, but I said, once I see it holding here and gold takes off or Euro starts to scoot, I'm going long market because I knew we'd get an explosive run. And I, knew my, my, I thought my run would be we'll get up into the 740s on a spike, and then I'll reverse that long and just get short and a hold up, held up. And so 743 was where I was looking for the market to run out of gas. And guess what? It ran out of gas at 743. But we only dipped just a little bit. I think we got to 37. And then we eventually made this move up to 756. And we got to 762, which is actually, I think, 763, which I've got marked off on a level on the, uh, on the 30 minute. And then we eventually worked lower. I shared that on the chat room that we had supported 723 and 726, 727 was at 38%, and I really just didn't want to mess around with it, so I ended up jumping out at 729. I probably should have held on to about at least 725, but I was still thinking maybe they'll finally launch it here, and I'll just go on and get out, and I'll just short in here, and then I'll just hang on. But like I said, the market dawdled for a very long time. We got down to about, I think, 716, and then we rallied back up to 741. And then, like I said, you know, Draghi knocked the freaking stuffing out of the market uh, from here. And we'll get into the 30-minute to kind of see how we're gonna, how best to play that. You can see we made a move down to 661. And we'll take a look at this closer on the 30-minute to see any fibs, where you probably could have come in. I mean, the thing is, if, if when he's talking, you have to be a little bit careful. If you do pick it, pick up like on a fall like that, you really have to pick it up at some very good levels. The 60, uh, 661, which it didn't make it all the way down, was definitely an area to go in and consider, and we'll jump into the 30 minutes to cover that. Ellen says it's on, uh, it's on the way to the circus, but no, that's not correct. Lynette has it right. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. That's what it is. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. But great, great, you know, great um, thoughts there from Lynette and Ellen. So let's go on and jump into the 30-minute euro. Um, so we kind of get a feel, because even when you miss something, there, you can always pick up on something as far as how to trade this thing going forward. So let's go on and jump into the euro. So we talked about this 789. Remember yesterday, and this is why I said I think we'll really have some trouble as we get make it up to 789. I didn't think we'd make it up to eight, or even if we made it up there, it'd be like on a extra little spike up. But this is where the the bulk of the selling would be done if we could get up there, and obviously we didn't. But this is at 756, the area that I was talking about, and one of the guys yesterday. Uh, I think his last name is Fernandez, something Fernandez. He asked me about it. He goes, hey, are we at that area? I think we're at that area you're talking about. Because I guess he got short right here at the 756. So um, he got a better area than I did because I played this move up on the long side, this one from the teens up, on a spike up. You, you could just see it. You could sense that the year really wanted to just bolt them. And we talked about that yesterday. If we can get past this 727, they're going to bolt them. And that's essentially what we did. And actually, Euro took off before the gold took off, although eventually the gold did take off and hit the 86.20. And we'll take a look at that. I didn't know if it, I didn't think it would get to 86, but I thought we're going to get above 85, at least on a, on a bit of a spike. And so let's go on and move into here with the Euro. So we did get that move up to 7.56. And I might be marked off on the 10-minute chart, but I do have... 762, I did have 762 marked off, and I guess that's from coming across here 
I don't know, but I have it on my 10-minute chart. Frankly, I was going to add on at that level, but I thought, well, maybe they can squeeze them up to 776, and I'll add on from there. But they kind of quickly ran out of gas once they got up here, and, and still even then I was kind of kicking myself a little bit because I thought, I remember even it being at 759, I go, you know, just pick it up because you'll probably at least grab 10 pips. And I didn't, and then I just let the rest, you know, come down here. We got sub-20. I jumped out at 729. We had a nice return back up to 740, 741. And then the market was overall holding. I did see this when we were in the teens. The market's holding up overall or coming back up here into the upper 720s. And then the bottom fell out when Draghi, you know, started flapping his gums about doing whatever he needed to do. So, like I said, this is a very good level. The 60, 662, we didn't quite make it there. But you knew that if it held that, and if you considered, I wasn't up because I'm starting to get up a little bit later, but in context, considering how far it had fallen, and it falls almost 60 pips, then it's not a bad idea to go in and come in because if it holds here, you could figure that they, even if they take out 662, there probably wouldn't be much follow-through beyond 50, and you would just add on. But we've seen a nice return rally, I just don't think, I'm not sure at this point that now that they can squeeze them because now you just kick the kick the legs out of the stool. So I think you'll probably see a little bit of a back and fill and you'll, if you can get a move down to uh, 678 and hang on. I think that'll be a decent area, but the market's really acting tricky now after uh, Draghi knocked the stuffing out. I think that you know we were holding here in the 720s, so I think, as I said before, I think there was a good chance we could have seen some end of the week short covering. So this really knocked knocked the market on its head, and we'll just have to see what it does. But I mean, you know, Draghi, he, he's not playing around. He's not going to, you know, he's got his momentum. And there he is speaking over there, you know, in Germany, in Frankfurt. And, you know, a couple of key members like uh, Jens Weidmann and uh, Wolfgang Schabel are in the audience. And Draghi's like, you know, hey, he's talking smack. It's just like, you know, he's got his momentum going. And, you know, it's like, you know, he's playing an NBA game and he's, He's already thrown in, you know, you know, 20 uh, before the half's out, and so he's throwing all kinds of smack in front of Weidman's and Scheibel's face. You know, I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do, and you're not even going to – don't even think about stopping me because you can't even – you can't even come close to slowing me down. And essentially, I mean, I don't think he's doing it with that impact. What I'm saying is is he goes into their house and he basically tells them, this is how I'm going to play you and you can't even stop me the way I'm going to play you. Well, that's essentially it. I'm saying Draghi's got some pretty pretty nasty momentum now. And it's basically, you know, if he can go into the into Frankfurt and tell them how the, how the cow eats the cabbage, then that's just the way it is. And like I said, we've seen that big – pull down here. So it's going to be hard. The euro is going to have a hard time trying to get back up because people see that and they're like, you know what, Draghi's not even backing down. He'll go into their own house and just tell them how it is. And so we've seen that pullback. So so any rises back here are going to be quite limited. He's basically turned the market on its head because I, like I said, I expected the market to pull back from here. I thought it would get to 743, then it would pull back into the 20s, then it would assault 756, then it would come back down here, then it would go eventually up to 789. Well, Draghi, I mean, over, overall, it got to the 43, but it only dipped like about, what, eight, nine pips, and then it launched to 56. Everything was hunky-dory at that point. I didn't want to stay short because I thought, you know what, maybe they have the momentum to really launch this sucker up pretty good. And it looked, everything looked like it was playing really in, in place uh, here, and we got into the 20s. I did see where we were at 7, I think we got as low as 7.11, and I think we'd come off of that. And then, like I said, the rest is history. Draghi kicked the stool out from under the, under the market. So I think now moves up towards 7.27 are just going to be... People are going to be put on shorts, and like I said, Draghi kind of flipped the script on this thing. I was looking for some better short covering, but I think it's going to be pretty tough now because 
if you try and every time this market gonna, is going to get up, Draghi's going to go on and slap it right back down. So, uh, and there's our 743. Remember, that's where I told you I was looking for the market to initially run all the gas, which capped the market on its initial run. But uh, like I said, then we were able eventually to get up to 756, which is, I think, this is the bottom of this zone here, which is so key. The zone is 756, 869, which 756, remember, that's that level I've been looking for since uh, early, you know, in the summer. Well, by basically June, but the market kept fighting it off and not able to go down to those levels. And once we got there, I thought that was a great area. But it's definitely going to work as resistance on the way up. So, like I said, any moves towards 727, I think, are going to be beat down. And ahead of that, we'll go on and throw this here. It's really 711 right there. So in a situation like that, you're better off probably starting to scale in. It's kind of like what we're looking at on the way down here is, let's say you thought, wow, I'm going to buy a 662, and the market ends up pulling back and holding here at 70, then you could get long at 72, 75. And what I'm saying is that <clears throat> if the market had pulled back, you'd say, you know what, they'll test the 662, I'll add again at 653. And so I think that what you'd be doing here is you probably want to start to jump in in this area. You might you might be able to squeeze a little bit more. I, you know, you could start to here at 712 and 727. The market, you know, the thing is, I don't think anybody got short on the way down to really speak of. So you still might see something like this. This I think that this might play out. So we still might go on and see a rally, but it's going to be really stunted, I think. And the thing is, is once we get up in this area, if we can, like let's say Monday or whatever, traders, like I kept telling you all, December the 3rd is a done deal. The ECB, I mean, the only thing is, do they even cut the, cut the deposit rate even more than that and take it to minus 40 as opposed to minus 0.3? which is really going to take the stuff out of the market. So, you know, at this point, even at 756, traders are going to put on shorts, and they are absolutely not going to freaking worry about it. So you have to keep that in the back of your head. I mean, Draghi really, he really turned the market on its ear this morning. He ain't playing around. And if the market tries to get any kind of a win behind it on the long side or Vibin or Shiba want to put in their two cents, Draghi's going to knock them right back down. And the market is realizing that. And I think you did see pretty good, which I was saying well before, good liquidation when we were down there in the 630s, 640s. Um, and now it's showing you that this market just can't get too much higher because Draghi's going to knock the hell out of it. So that's what we have here. Let's move into some other markets. And it's actually time for break. But I think it was important to spend some pretty good time on that euro to give a good perspective. So this helps you when you put on these trades because, and we've got a pretty nice wick, you know, on this two hour. It gives you perspective to that way you're not shaked out of your trades. Okay, so that that's the key thing. You know, it's the same thing I was talking about when we were down here. I said, I think we're seeing some really good liquidation. And I think I was saying under the surface, we're seeing some very good long liquidation from the big hands. So, but even then, this wasn't that much of a rally in the context. But, you know, like I said, I never thought that the euro could really make it up above eight. I thought 789 was just going to be awesome to come in and sell it. I think eventually we can still squeeze up a little bit higher, and we may even get above the 740, but people are going to be really leaning on this thing big time. I'm in big time. So 
let's go in and take a break and then we'll look into the gold market. It's really nothing happened on the spoos, and we'll take a look at the crude oil market. So let's go in and catch a break. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome back to the uh, European crossover webinar. So we've got the, the gold market here, and you know, I was surprised to see it drop into the 60s. I thought that, you know, even this move down here, which we had a nice uh, long legged doji, which generally is going to indicate that the momentum, the market is running out of the momentum in the current direction it's going. And obviously, we know the current direction was south of the border. Uh, but, and we did see a nice little pullback, although it was rather quiet. And we came up to this 1095. We got a very nice spinning top. I was not looking to sell this market, so when it got up here, I didn't do I didn't do a damn thing. But we did go in and work lower, and I thought, you know, if we push lower, it's it's not going to be there won't be any real follow through, and the market can work higher. But the rest is history as we continue to work lower. And we worked lower as we came into the FOMC minutes, which obviously no one was going to stand in the way of King Dollar. So we did see a nice little bottom here. On the release of those FOMC minutes, we saw the market kind of spike back, and then we got this, uh, you know, once again, essentially a long legged doji. Not as long as this one, but kind of telling you, hey, look, the market's run out of momentum. Doesn't mean it's going to turn around and shoot for the stars, but generally means, hey, look, it's time to go and let up. And we talked about this yesterday with crude, how crude is traded so crazy, where you get, you know, long legged doji and the market just barely dips and then rips everybody's. <laughs> Face off, then comes right back down and, and eventually heads lower. And while I was saying that, I think crude, I think the idea with crude, obviously we're talking about gold, is that it's so volatile now, it's run a lot of speculators out of the market. So, uh, but anyway, so let's jump back in here and talk about about gold and uh, gold in here. So, like I said, we saw this this market started to go in and, and you know get over, you know, starting to pull back from where it had been. Truly overdone, <clears throat> and I talked about this yesterday. I actually shared with a couple of traders. I had a level of 68.90, and then also uh, I think it was a 61 percent, which was at 68, 68.40. Really nice area to come in, and I've really gotten—I wouldn't say gotten active, but I've started to trade the, the crude oil. Uh, use a new platform that TT, and you can kind of move in and out rather quickly. And um, one of the things was, like I said, when we got that, when we hit that level, we bounced off nicely, but we didn't really take off, and we're sitting there, and I had already come in long on the euro at 83, and I discussed it with Blake, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not going to jump out of this goal and for, you know, if it, it has a confluence of support, 68.90, 68.40, I'm going to let it ride, but at the same token, so if it has to go lower, it's going to go lower, and I guess I'm going to get stopped out of the loss. But I sure as heck wasn't going to, after the euro dollar got all the way down to, I think it was 68. I was thinking, well, you know, this doesn't look so good. I would have thought that gold would have bopped off of that, and then euro would really start to advance, and I could have done a little bit better job coming in the euro as opposed to 83. Uh, I had a technical setup. I could have really pushed it down to, which would have been a lot better, coming around to like 77. I wouldn't have felt so bad. So. When I when the euro started to pop up, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to hang around because gold's still not doing crap. But gold did finally take off, and take off it did in a big way. And we saw this big rally. Then we pulled back, and we looked on a 30 minute, but the market had stopped at around, I think it was 83.90, I think it was, or 83.30. And we pulled back, and I thought that they would assault this market and get up beyond 85. I didn't know that they'd come up to 86. But it really was a nice move, and then we pulled back and kind of jerked around. But I think that, and, and now we've got, if you look at it, something that's key here is we've got the, the 2134 exponential moving average. I think one of the guys, I think was sitting yesterday, asked me about the moving averages I use, and I told him that I you know, use it across the board, the same one, the 9 and 27 exponential moving averages, when I'm looking at the 30 minute. But on the 2 hour, that's why the color different because I use a 21 and 34. And I've always liked that one. Uh, it's also kind of mirrors in with like a fib kind of kind of thing going. But you can see here that we've been on a sell signal. 
here, since way back here, up at these levels, 1167, and you can see that it hasn't changed. Now, it kissed it right here. You see here, it looked like we would almost have right there. And that's how, if there's a hair, if you look at it, there's a, a hair of breathing space, but nothing, I mean, for the most part, you'd have to say it's just kissing it right here, and we assaulted lower. Now we finally got a buy signal here. So it looks like the market now has some momentum. And we talked about this. This is the whole reason why I didn't think that we would extend a new leg lower, although this does surprise me that we're able to make it down to the 60s. But then again, you have to figure we were coming into the FOMC minutes I'm not trying to make an excuse, but it was like nobody was going to stand the way of the dollar at that time. But uh, it still surprised me. I didn't think we'd get below 1050, but it did surprise me we got down into the 60s. But it looks like one of the things I thought that was going to be supportive for the market was we were going to go and see some jewelry demand as we come into the holidays. And I think that that's still going to go and be the case. So I think we have some momentum here. And the way to play this gold now is going to be on the long side. You can go on and step in, and, and it looks like it's a, it's a, if you look at an intraday, it's a fantastic trading vehicle. I actually was going to, I said I was, and I didn't. Uh, I was going to go on and take a short there. And it was just, it was incredible how this market, it got up here above this 86. It's actually right here, right here. And it dropped, nearly, it actually dropped like about a dollar, about a dollar, almost a dollar fifty in about 15 seconds, and within three minutes, it already shed over two dollars. And eventually, you saw this market go below the 80 from that 86. It was just like I said, it was. It, it's. I think it's an awesome day trading vehicle. Uh, but anyway, we're going to move into the 30 minute to, to get a closer look on gold to kind of get a feel. Now you know, it looks like we're you know we definitely got some momentum. We're getting a nice buy signal in in gold, which we haven't had. Uh, since, for perspective sake, since 1167. So this is pretty key. And let's go and move into the 30 minute. Now look at that move to 86.60, and the crazy thing was, I mean, I, I've traded gold, but I haven't traded in the sense that I'm really actively trying to day trade slash so scalp it. And I was, I mean, I, I actually was going to pull the trigger here. Well, it happened so fast, but I was going to have a limit ahead of it. And I, I think I was going to have the limit like 86.30. I mean, I saw it on the way up, and I thought about hitting that bid there, and I was mildly shocked how fast it came off from that 86 area, how quickly it came off of it and shed like, it shed a do, like a dollar twenty or a dollar forty literally in less than 15 seconds. It was so fast. And then like I said, within three minutes, it already shed over two bucks. And then we eventually made it look, we eventually came right through 80. Fanta I think it's a fantastic market. We've talked about gold before, is that the key thing is you have to wait for those nice setups. but there is some very good money, and I think it's going to be some very good money. Now we switch into a buy signal on the two-hour. I think we can start to now see a return rally back in the gold, and we can see some very nice two-way action in this in this market. But uh, you know, like we see here, we're taking a look at it here on the um, on the 30-minute, and we've talked about this. You know, we've got the sell signal, and <clears throat> it stayed sell signal. It didn't. It only kissed the line up here. And finally, we get a buy signal right here. We take off. Now, we talked about this before. I think this is one of the strongest signals I ever see. I see is where we've talked about this. It's where you, you dip below the market and you come right back above it. Because the whole thinking there is that now you've gotten some people short who think, yeah, it was all a bunch of baloney. We're heading lower. 
and then the market rips back in the face. Now, it wasn't like it ran all the way up here, but it, it rips up here to 75.90, and now that flips this back to the buy side. Even here, right here, as the market moves higher, you can already start to see, even right here, if you said, well, it didn't really give the buy signal to really, it was really beyond this next bar. Well, once we get up here, even into the upper 70s, you can know, you can see that this market really wants to move higher. Now we're in a buy signal. So we make that scoop on the next leg up here. We come down, and even though we dipped into the 70s, notice how the trajectory still stays higher. And even then, we made even higher highs than the 8660 up here. So that's what I'm saying where the moving average really will help you is it keeps you on the right side of the market, I believe. But one of the key things is, is that when you see a signal, which I wouldn't say it's a false signal, but a signal that that is quickly negated, then you want to go with that because the momentum is going to be strong. You're going to see a ring and then other people see it and say, whoa, it actually you know, negated that. So you're going to see a stronger push of momentum, and that's what you saw here. Right here, so it's make a very nice move. Now you can see here that on this initial run, we've made it up to it was 83.20, and then the market pulled back. But this is what I was looking for in the chat room. I thought that we could see one more leg up. I didn't think it'd make it up to 86, but I thought the next leg up. I thought it was going to go beyond 84, but I thought if it goes beyond 84, 85 is a marker. They're going to go up for not 85. So I thought they'd hit 85 and just go beyond that. And I was initially going to put a limit in. I thought, no, I'm going to let it go because I don't know how far it will go. And when I started getting above 86, I thought, you know what, maybe I should go and grab it. I didn't. That was a mistake, and I was shocked how fast it came off. Like I said, it lost a dollar, dollar twenty or dollar forty in less than 15, 15 seconds. I mean, it was quick. That's some pretty doggone good money. So I think this is going to be an exceptional day trading market here in gold, and we'll obviously be covering it quite extensively here on the European crossover webinar. So let's go on and move into crude oil. Be just one more switch the screens I'm over here getting all discombobulated. Okay, now where the hell is my mouse? Damn. Okay, here we are, crude. This is a very good market to trade with. This thing, the problem with this is it's run a lot of freaking speculators out of Dodge. And we, you know, I'm not going to go into, it, but we've already we've talked about this BS right here, and it's just it's just ripping people up like nobody's business. So we're going to cover the crude, but I think that, you know, in light of as many people that have gotten whacked on this thing, I think you're better off not trading this for a little while. I'm I'm not even trading it. I'm tracking it, but until this thing really, you know. The earliest I would trade this thing now would not be till next week, and that'd be the earliest. And I'm actually just observing it at this point because it's whacked so many people over the head, and I don't want to be one of the people that gets whacked over the head. Uh, let me take a look at something. Fred says, "What is your upper gold target?" I don't have targets. I'm, I'm like I said, you know, let me get back to gold. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not a, a swing trader, position trader. I'm just day trading. I'm day trading the levels. I, you know, I used to do that stuff. That, I mean, that's a that's a very good question as to what your level. We can look. I mean, we can legitimately look at a. I would say 23 percent. Uh, so we'll look at that real quickly. Of uh, this move, is probably a target to shoot for. 23 percent takes us to 1091. It's actually 1090.60. So that's probably reasonable. The next one I'd say would be this 1108. If you want to call for a real target, I'd say 1108 because 1108 is going to be the 38% of this move from 1062 up here to what was it, 1184-ish, okay? And then also, so let's go and just mark this down just for the sake of marking it down.
if you remember on the way down, remember when we were, we were trying to get long here and trade this in? Remember it was in the 1120s and we got down to 1115 and that, that day when it dipped so low, I said, hey, the next target is going to be 1107. And then we also talked about 110240. Well, this 1107 is going to confluence with this 1108. Let me move this down here a little bit. There we go. This is where I think the market will eventually go to 1107. There is 1091, 1090.60 actually, which is a 23%, uh, but I think this is where the market will go to. There'll be a pit stop, obviously, around 1102.40, which held the market down here before we bounced up to 1111. Uh, but uh, this is where I think they'll go to. Now, they might even overshoot this thing, but I'm just saying, if you're looking for something to shoot for, that. But like I said, I, I just don't trade it like that. I'm just, you know, like I said, I was buying yesterday. I'm just looking at the levels. I, I watch the momentum as it changes. I really don't shoot for upper targets and stuff. That's like asking me, what's your target on the euro? I didn't even think it would get to 11. I didn't think it would get to, to oh, 08, but I don't have targets. You know, the euro is going to get to 825. I don't, I don't even play that kind of a game. But it's a legitimate question, and 1108 is where I think the market will eventually, you know, go on and shoot for. So let's go on and move back here into crude oil. Sydney says, Good morning, Paul. If uh, Paul, if gold rallies, will the euro rally? If at the time the dollar is not showing strength, thanks. Um, you know the relationship comes and goes. I will say this: one of the things that I was thinking about when I was in the chat room yesterday, and we are seeing the euro pull back to 683 right now. I was in the chat room yesterday, and you know, obviously, you know, the euro re rally. I jumped out ahead because at the time gold wasn't doing crap, and the euro was trading in the 17s, in like 714, 713. And I said, as long as 709 holes, and I said, you know, I'm looking for gold to one more leg. And I thought to myself, I got, I don't even, I thought to myself quickly, I kind of thought, I don't know why the hell I'm waiting for gold. And it's nothing against gold, but gold kept waiting for the euro to rally so the gold could rally from the 80s to the upper 90s, and euro couldn't pull its head out of its rear end. And and that was twice on two big trades that I said, hey, this is, you know, gold could really start to take off. So I'm thinking, why the hell am I worried about the euro waiting for gold when neither one's really trading off of each other? So at times they do trade in conjunction, and I thought that we could really see a ripper if gold took off. Now, the euro ultimately ended up taking off by itself, but then when gold jumped into the foray, which probably the euro helped the gold, then we, they both traded hand in hand, and that was that run up that we saw in the euro, eventually up to 762. I don't think it's I, euros trading. Euros march into its own drummer, and what what's coming up on December the third far outweighs anything that gold's going to do. What I would do is you could say the gold could be supportive of the euro, but that's really only if you start to see the dollar slide a little bit across the board. I, I would not, there are times when, there used to be times, like a couple of years ago, when gold would rally, you would see the euro take off. We're just not in that type of environment right now, and Draghi's holding sway over the euro, and that's the way you got to go on it and roll with it. So getting back here once again to the crude oil market, where it's almost time for Blake to come on, I do see support here at 41.35, right in here. We'll jump into the 30 minute quickly. I think the euro is going to be tricky to trade today, but I think it's probably a buy. Uh, like I said, maybe you can pick it up. I think it said 78-ish. Let's pull it up real fast. Um, yeah, probably like 78-ish. You just have to be uh, – I would wait for it to stabilize. I think 78 is probably pretty decent overall. But I tell you what, they've really – Draghi you really turn this thing up on its head. So you just have to be careful. And, you know, I don't like to trade very, too active on a Friday. I've been doing it lately with a little bit more than I usually do. But, like I said, Draghi really flipped the script on this, and you, you, you need to be careful. So, like, on the two-hour, 
but I think if you want to step in on the euro, that that 78 ish is going to be a decent area. At least to step in, and I would only be looking to scalp it. I wouldn't be trying to look to make a whole lot of money. If you can grab 10, 12 pips, t take it. Same thing. Don't. I just think it's going to be a little bit under pressure. I don't think the wheels are going to come off the caboose. Uh, I don't think that. But uh, anyway, coming into crude oil, we're here at this 41.31. You can see that. But I can tell you right now, this crude. I think it's just run a lot of people, a lot of small speculators out of dodge. And so you really have to go and be careful. And I really don't see anything other than these bigger levels. You can see 4063, 4131, this 4191. You come to this level and it sits there like a freaking bump on the log and nothing happens. And I can't stand to be in a market that just doesn't sit there because you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And then you have to worry, do other people give in? And now the market takes off and now you're sitting there at the mercy of it. And so I think this is really indicative of just a lot of people that have been knocked out of the market. Although supply level wise, it does look like we're going a whole heck of a lot lower. 